Okay, hi. So in our last video, we were discussing random walk, uh, random walk with drift, and uh, trend stationary process. So now let's see uh, how those data generate, how look the time paths generated by those uh, data generating processes. Okay, so look, I'm gonna do it in R as before. And I'm going to start by loading some packages, but what is important? I'm creating a vector of 1000 observations. This will be our time variable. And then I'm creating another vector of the same length, but this one is uh, filled with uh, random shocks coming from normal distribution with zero mean and standard deviation equal to uh, 0 0.5. Look, basically, in this case, uh, uh, it, it, the time series is created as a cumulated sum of all the shocks from the past. So, how will it look? Okay, I'm going to add an, uh, uh, a trend line. Uh, in this case, trend line is simply zero because this is random walk without drift. And look, we see that the variable actually, no, give me a second to zoom, uh, fluctuates around zero. Uh, sometimes it's below, sometimes it's above, but of course, as you see, the movement of the variable appears random, but you see that there are also prolonged periods when we are above uh, uh, above the trend line, uh, uh, so above the mean value or below. It might happen that if a couple of uh, positive shocks like here accumulate over time, it's really hard uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the next negative shocks to compensate. And look, this is why uh, because we have perfect memory in case of this time series, it might happen that once we drift it somewhere, uh, we we maintain above uh, above the mean value before the time series is actually the day before that uh, 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 we get enough negative shocks to compensate. Okay, so now that we know how random work works let's uh, move to something more practical and uh, uh, because of course random walk is not very useful in economics but once we add a drift so this is what I'm doing here I'm adding vector uh, uh, vector of of constants and look basically in our case uh, we are moving every time uh, by two units. So our B, uh, uh, our alpha is two. Okay, and now we also add a vector of uh, random shocks, this time with mean zero and standard deviation equal to 10. Okay, now we can plot them. And if we zoom in, Sorry, sometimes this happens. Okay, when we zoom in, what do we see? Look, uh, we see here that uh, the variable fluctuates, uh, the values of the variable, let's just say this is GDP, fluctuates around, uh, or around the deterministic linear trend. But look, it still happens uh, it, we still have uh, the phenomenon of random walk associated with perfect memory, which means that once we are, uh, uh, like if we drift away from the trend, if we move uh, uh, due to some positive shocks, like you can see over here, we can maintain here for a very long time before uh, Mm, a sufficient number of negative shocks appears and we have this mean reversion in this case simply the trend reversion uh, okay now 
the last uh, process uh, we've discussed is trend stationary process that we've got over here. Now I'm going to use just uh, 200 observations so, uh, uh, so we can better see the differences. And I'm simply generating now a time trend, a uh, deterministic time trend. So we have alpha equal to 100, beta equal to 2. And again, I'm putting here, I'm adding uh, 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 random shocks. Oh, here the st standard deviation is 40. So as you see, it's even bigger than in the case of... Uh, uh, of uh, random walk with drift, but I wanted to see. Uh, I wanted you to see the effects of this mean reversion of this trend reversion that we we observe. Because in case of a uh, trend stationary process, we will have adjustment. If again we uh, interpret uh, y as economy uh, as GDP we see that economy goes through adjustment process and goes back to the trend value. Okay, so what do we see over here? Look, now, even though the shocks, now, even though the shocks are way, uh, uh, are coming from normal distribution with higher standard deviation, so they are more severe, uh, we see that actually econ uh, economy fluctuates around the trend value. Why does it happen? Because we have the adjustment coefficient here and uh, as time goes by, economy moves closer and closer to trend value because the shocks are absorbed uh, through elastic wages, through uh, fiscal and monetary policies, uh, uh, prepared by uh, government and central bank respectively. So, in this case, look, we see that, uh, that the values of the, uh, uh, of the, of the variable, of, of let's just say GDP, are way closer to the trend value. And, uh, as you can see, they are moving more often uh, uh, around it. They do not stay far away above or far away uh, or for a, uh, for a long time above or for a long time below the value because we observe the uh, adjustment. Okay, thank you for your attention. In the next movie, you will see some basics of unit root tests and how to, uh, how to use these unit root tests and uh, how to estimate uh, different equations we've been uh, discussing. We're going to uh, discuss two movies from now. Thank you for your attention.